can't spend the rest of my life having sex with just you. Jordan Abrams, please report to the gate. I'm waiting for someone. She's not coming. Right, you need, you need intensive training. You need, like, a Jedi master. Yes, yes, I need a Yoda. Yes, a Yoda. Can't worry if I'm broken, dumbass. Let's see what you got. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whatever you just did right there, don't ever do that again. We're in a movie called My Awkward Sexual Adventure, but you're also uh, somebody who wrote it, I hear. I am. Tell me a little bit about uh, about creating the film and the story and, and the title, because the title's great. The title was an afterthought, mm-hmm. uh, and the movie took me, it took about uh, 10 years in the in the writing of it. Wow. I, start, I wrote the first draft in, the, in 2000, and it was a very, very different kind of movie. And then I kind of found the movie through rewrites and notes and people reading it and saying, yeah, no, try this. That doesn't work. Find something better. And so I kind of, when I discovered this sort of sexual awakening story of this sort of, this guy who is sort of hapless with with women and with his, you know, sexuality, that's when the movie came to life. And the the title was, uh, uh, yeah, the title kind of, I, I wanted something provocative. I wanted something that I was inspired by titles like The 40-Year-Old Virgin, mm. you know, where you know right away, okay, this is a comedy, it's about, you kind of know what the movie is. And I wanted to emulate that if I could, and I wanted to entice people. And so I think, I hope I did that. It, it definitely gets a lot of people talking. Mm. Um, this is, uh, this is, is this, this is a romantic comedy. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. But tell me about kind of writing awkward comedy. <laughs> I don't know. It comes really easily to me. <laughs> Um, I think a lot of writers, especially writer actors, are um, afraid to reveal vulnerability. Like, I think there's a whole, like, I don't know if we, you know, we we could never make this movie in Hollywood because nobody would, no Hollywood actor would want to play my character because they want to play characters who have bravado or, you know, who are confident or who are winners. And this guy is a total loser and wears his sexual insecurity on his sleeve. And so... I, th- I found that once I delved into that, it was really easy. Um, once I was willing to kind of go there, and it's not by any means autobiographical. Uh, it's not a personal movie per se, mm. but I definitely uh, allowed myself to kind of tap, you know, things that I'd either experienced or been through or, you know, had considered at various stages of my life. And I think there, so it feels personal mm. because I think it's relatable. And, uh, and I think everybody has struggled with some, you know, version of what my character's going through, which is why I think you watched it through your fingers. Are we more comfortable with that in Canada or, you know, kind of talking about those awkward adventures? Yeah, I think, you know, I think we're a little less slick. There's a little less. <laughs> no, and I think that's yeah. a really good thing. Like there's a there's less of an impulse to be cool and to, I mean, Canada, you know, I think Canada is awesome, but I don't think it's like, like Hollywood is Hollywood. And then Canada has got its own kind of tone and vibe and, you know, friendly, like Manitoba and license plates say friendly Manitoba. Like there's a sort of, that we're friendly or we're a little more where, you know, like I said, wear it on your sleeve. So definitely I think, uh, and, and the, the idea of, of seeing sex uh, on, in film, it's usually, like you say, it's operatic. You know, you watch sex scenes and everyone knows where to put everything in their hands and they, it all looks like a like a perfect dance. And But nobody looks like that <laughs> when they're having sex. You know, take a look. It's kind of weird and, you know, uncomfortable and a bit awkward. I mean, I've had, I had friends once that were had, tol- had told us that they had videotaped themselves having sex and they were so horrified by what they saw. <laughs> Lots of jiggling and just grunting and weird faces like it is not sexy uh necessarily so i wanted to tap into that and i and i I, that was one of our goals from the beginning was that we wanted the sex to be very real Mm. and uh and very raw and um sort of try showing it in a new a different light hopefully a more realistic one now you because you wrote this this was um an interesting scenario for you because you're on set which you know not often screenwriters are Mm -hmm. um and you are still having to pass it on to a director so tell me about the relationship between the director sean garrity and yourself and kind of creating that story that was was easy only because sean and i have worked together on this is our fifth feature Mm -hmm. and uh you know and lots of other stuff we just we're collaborators so it was really um, easy for me to give up 
control. And when I when we talked about him c coming on and directing this, I knew right away that what I was going to do as uh, the writer was I was going to step away. I would work with him in, in the writing process, and he was very instrumental in providing notes and guidance. And and then once we were on set, he was the director and I was the actor. And if there was a writing question that came up, we would address it together. But in the end, he was going to have final say on all that stuff. So it was really easy for me to give that up. There were fights that I, like, I, you know, I argued about stuff. There were battles that I waged. But, you know, I would always relent to him. And, and so we never had conflict in that regard. It was a really lovely collaboration, a really sweet kind of unity. And, and I wasn't, there was some writing on set. There was some improvising, some ad-libbing. But uh, we never found ourselves scratching our heads and going, oh, no, this, you know, this plot point doesn't work because we had spent so much time, mm. 10 years, mm. writing this thing and working it out and figuring and solving the problems. It, we weren't surprised on the day by anything huge. So it was fairly harmonious. Mm. Tell me about pulling the cast together. Um, you have a great cast in it, Al along with yourself is uh, Emily Hampshire and Vixa High. So tell me about um, bringing them into the to the fold. And did you know straight away that you wanted Emily to play? Um, you know, I don't. She seems very confident to me, the character. Yeah, you know, Emily. Emily was a yes. We did know right away. Uh, Sean and I had wanted to. We we tried to get Emily for our, uh, another movie back in two thousand and five, and we couldn't get her for various reasons. But we were such fans. And I really wanted to see Emily in a role. She usually plays dark characters and misfits and kind of you don't see her smile a lot. And mm. after the first week <laughs> of shooting, we were like, look at that smile. This woman is alive and she's so bright and, and, and beautiful. And and so I wanted to see that contrast. I really wanted to see her. T and she's very intelligent, too. And I think that's really important for the character because you don't, you know, you're, you're treading um, – you're treading water writing a man writing a, a stripper character and you don't want I wanted to be very careful not to be stereotyping not to be you know um, offensive I want to be very respectful um, and so she was just perfect for it and uh, was relatively easy to get her because she liked the script I mean if she hadn't liked the script then she wouldn't have done it and it wouldn't have been an, an, an option but um, we were thrilled that she wanted to do it um, and Vic is Vic and I are friends and we've done stuff together for years and I wrote the part for Vic uh, at some point in that 10 years of writing uh, the character became Indo-Canadian and was written for like it wasn't always that way and then once I realized oh this has to be Vic you know I wrote it for him and he helped kind of tool and tweak that character so it was very much a collaboration uh, between all of us I feel like everybody contributed to their characters and to the writing of it and I had Emily in mind right from the get-go so I could hear her voice in the character and same with Vic of course and that the, the magic and the rhythms of Vic and my you know speech in the movie is based on the rhythm that we share in real life. Mm. Her character as well was um, she contributed a lot to the relationship between the mm. two of you like you had something to offer her she had something to offer you and I thought that was you know as opposed to going for the straight you know that kind of stripper cliche I mm. thought that was interesting she was very she was very assertive and there were a few really interesting uh personality traits that I liked that came out of that character that you don't normally see on screen oh yeah like what for example well just the fact that yeah. she was a lot more savvy and yeah. and as soon as you know, Mr. Accountant gets that, uh, you know, that, um, like, as soon as she starts getting the math, you yeah. know, and figuring out how she can help herself for the future, right. like, she became quite empowered. Yeah. And I kind of loved that about the character. So was that was that a type of thing you were, you know, you had in mind was to, to kind of help her with an evolution, have that character have a good evolution or an arc? Absolutely. That's one of the things that I worked so hard and long on in the movie was to have a very balanced sense of, for the longest time, it was really just him benefiting from her knowledge or expertise. And at some point in the writing process, it clicked that, well, we really need this to be both ways. You know, what can, what is she getting from him? Mm -hmm. And once we figured that out, that sort of double arc of these two characters kind of both evolving in their own ways really came to life. And, and that's when it started to become more realized. Um, I don't know a lot of strippers. Uh, but I do. Your wife will be happy to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I know I, I do. I have met some, mm. and I generally find them to be very empowered 
people, um, not victims. I mean, yes, there is a lot of you know drug abuse and 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 sexual abuse and physical abuse in, uh, for, but in any profession in the sex industry. But I met a lot. I, I mean, I did speak to and met a lot of strippers who were very empowered, and who owned their um, their career in a way that you didn't feel. Oh, how sad she's stripping, and oh, is there nothing better? And so I wanted to portray that. I didn't want this to be a sad sack story. I mean, she she chose this career, and yeah, she's got another dream. But most people who who have a day job do have another dream. So really, it could have been anything. Um, but you know, I needed her to be sexually confident and savvy, and so that just kind of fell into place.